Okay, hey guys, welcome. Josh Cantwell here with strategicrealestatecoach.com, and I'm here with my buddy Daniel Wiafi. Daniel is the house flipping ninja, um, and he's the host of Five Figure Flips on HGTV. Uh, and Daniel and I are here today to basically talk real estate. Uh, Daniel's been a, an investor for a number of years. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's been involved in in lots of different uh, you know business ventures and strategies and. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about wholesaling and marketing. We'll talk a little bit about rehabs as well as, you know, how Daniel was able to get onto uh, HGTV and, and be the host of an awesome show. So, Daniel, welcome. Thanks for being here, my man. Oh, thank you for having me, Josh. How are you doing today? I am doing awesome. I'm doing awesome as usual. As we, we were talking before we, we uh, started recording, I have this perpetual smile on my face. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, it, just uh, this morning I was talking with uh, – with one of my partners, we're starting a uh, basically it's it's not really an investment bank. It's it's basically a funding company. We started Strategic Freedom Funding just this morning, and we're funding deals for students all over the country. So it made my smile even bigger. <laughs> well, I'm sure you made the smiles bigger in a lot of your students' faces by saying yeah, that. They don't even know about it yet, which is cool. This <laughs> might be anybody who hears this for the first time is. Uh, is probably the first time they'll hear it. So, so Daniel, this this interview is really all about you, my man, and some things that we can teach uh, my subscribers and anybody who will listen to this about real estate. So, just give everybody the you know give everybody a little bit of flavor about, about you and your wife and all the different business ventures you've been in and how you how you, you jumped into real estate and then you know how how you get on TV, man. I'm not even on TV. How, how do you how did you get on HGTV? <laughs> well, man, I I paid off a lot of people. Okay, it's all it takes is money, money, money. Like Johnny Manziel. Yeah, money, money, money. Like you know, I was trying to, hey, well, you know, you're in Ohio, so you know all about uh, uh, Johnny Manziel and the money yeah, deal. That's right. No, but, that's right. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I mean, in all serious, uh, Josh, um, I consider it um, a blessing. Um, I've worked hard over the past few years. Um, I've positioned myself in certain areas of business the, these past few years, and uh, pretty much just my persistence and me being goal oriented me putting in work and then blessing uh, God's blessing that's pretty much what led me to uh, get this deal on HGTV okay so, so uh, tell us about the show tell us about what's how does it uh, what, what's the storyline what's what does it revolve around okay uh, basically the show is called five figure flip and it is actually following myself, my wife Melinda, and my four-year-old son Malachi as we're fixing and flipping houses in good old Tulsa, Oklahoma. And oh, cool. uh, it just follows us and our little shenanigans from uh, finding the properties at auctions, foreclosures, however we find it, uh, we fix them. Uh, actually, we don't fix them, but our contractors fix them. Right. Um, and then it follows us in the whole marketing side of things and getting it sold from start to finish. Very cool, very cool. So, five figure flips. What, 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 uh, what created that title? Is it, is it, you know, buying, fixing, flipping, selling them, and making at least, you know, at least five figures, right? I mean, my, my program, as you know, you're one of our members, subscribers, is 40k flips. Um, so, who came up with the title? That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm, I'm assuming that uh, somebody who's a pay grade above me at HGTV came up with that uh, that title. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was pretty creative. Um, yeah, uh, basically the the first flip that we did uh, was on the pilot episode, which aired on May 6th. Aired all month long during May. Uh, we made uh, a little over forty thousand. We made uh, forty three thousand dollars total. Nice. Um, and so I guess uh, when we crunched the numbers, they uh, decided to roll with five-figure flips. So uh, nice. it works for me. As long as it's not a three-figure flip or four-figure flip, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you made 43 grand. It sounds like a 40K flip. I like it. I know, That's right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's interesting. You know, Daniel and I are, are, are relatively new friends. You know, we, uh, mm -hmm. we got in contact from Chris Cedar. Who's one of my coaches and also another uh, fellow speaker, investor, and trainer out of Montana? He's going to be at our at our next training event coming up here in just a few weeks. And he said, "Hey, you know, you, did you know that you have this uh, this this subscriber, this student who's on HGTV? You should really talk to him." And that was I don't know, maybe forty five days ago, sixty days ago. And yep. it turns out we have a lot of mutual friends, Mark Evans and and Chris and a number of other guys. So. 
Um, Daniel, give us give us a little bit of flavor about before the show, and and how did you get into real estate? And and maybe for those people, maybe this is their first exposure to real estate. Maybe this is the first time they've ever heard a real estate webinar or training or video or podcast. How did how did you guys get involved? And what are maybe a few tips that you could give somebody if they're just getting started with real estate? Okay. Well, um, I'll begin by saying that uh, if a person is new in real estate and they're on this webinar, um, that uh, you should continue to listen to uh, Josh. He has some good information, good content. Keep on listening to him. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he's like Daniel my hero. For that. Little little uh, little endorsement, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, and, and I'm be, I'm being serious, man. You have t uh, totally great content. Uh, but uh, with me, I've always been an entrepreneur. Um, I'm uh, 34 years old right now. And uh, back in the day when I was going to college, you know, I got into a little bit of trouble financial wise. Um, so I uh, went through bankruptcy back when I was 21 years old. Um, okay. at that time, I was living in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, go corn huskers, you know. There you go. Um, but um, I, it, it kind of shifted my mindset, Josh. And so what I did after that embarrassment was I pretty much just uh, went out there. I learned as much about finances and business as I could. I read your rich dad, poor dads, and I just enlightened myself. And so uh, fast forward uh, about a year or so, I moved down to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, that's where my future wife to be, Melinda, was living at. Um, when I got down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, I was about 22, 23 years old, and um, I got into internet marketing. And so uh, fast forward a few years, by 2005, 2006, 2006-ish, uh, I was uh, making about uh, 60 to 80K a month in uh, revenues from doing affiliate marketing and internet marketing. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Josh, I'll tell you, man, for a dude that's 25 or 26 years old, when you're making that type of money, I mean, you just feel like you're a total baller. You know, yeah, for and, sure. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, I would wake up every morning and like I would have like uh, have made like a thousand dollars in the morning. You know, before I woke up, you know, it was insane. And so, <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I did that for about a year, year and a half. And I mean, we were totally crushing it out there. We were doing ringtones and payday loans and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, long story short, um, I was running all of my um, campaigns through Google AdWords. And um, I know you're you're an internet marketing guy yourself, yeah. uh, Josh. One of your many uh, uh, fields you do. Uh, one of my but, many hats. Yeah, one of your many hats. You know, I probably should have worn a hat. You know, scalp's kind of cold. Your pipes are bigger <laughs> than mine. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now we're talking. All right. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you're a fun guy. I'm glad I met you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Google AdWords. They did what's called a Google slap. And for those of uh, you guys out there who don't know what a Google slap is, it's when they slap you across your face and shut down your campaigns. So pretty much, Josh, from overnight, I went from making uh, a $1,500, $2,000 a day in revenue to making zero. Zilch, not a – and yeah, really sucks. Um, the good thing about it is that I learned my lesson, you know, from going bankrupt, and I saved a lot of my money, and I didn't buy stupid stuff, you know. Um, so uh, pretty much for the next two, three years, I I knew that I couldn't go back to working a job, a nine to five job, because when you've been in that place where you you've made tons of money, you can't go back to having a job. Yeah, you no know, way. Once you get that entrepreneurial bug and it bites you, man, forget it. You're not yeah. uh, not going back to corporate. Exactly. You don't kill me if I have to go back, you know? That's, but anyways, uh, <laughs> so anyways, um, I was doing a lot of, um, uh, trying a lot of businesses, and I was failing miserably in some of the uh, new business pursuits that I was going after, and this is around 2009-ish, 2010. Um, so um, I was listening to uh, different internet marketing podcasts, and one podcast I came to was a podcast by Nathan Jurowitz and Sean yeah, Terry called uh, Internet Marketing something I forget yeah uh, I just so, talked to Nathan uh, anyway yesterday. Nathan's a good good dude he's well, one you of did. My yeah Nathan's one of my original students when I first launched my coaching program my 25k coaching program uh, in 2007 I think Nathan was literally the first person to sign up we were in a coaching program together back in 2004 and we were both students learning from someone else 
Um, and then we had lost touch, and then we invited him back when we did our first live event, which was July 2007. I can't believe it's been almost seven years. Wow, we're and, old. Uh, and Nathan was there. We had about 125 people, and, and uh, Nathan and his dad were the first ones to sign up. So I've had a great relationship with Nathan going on 10 years now. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I've never had the chance to meet him, but uh, he seems like a totally chill and cool guy. You know, yeah. With the, does he still have the yeah, leopard the, cheetah the leopard, prints? He has the leopard hair, the leopard pill. He's got some product out now called the leopard pill, and you know, it's all about kind of getting, uh, getting into the good old boys network of, of big relationships and big money. It's very cool. So anyway, you were uh, you were listening to that podcast, that, that internet marketing podcast they had? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was uh, listening to the internet uh, marketing podcast that they had. And, you know, as you know, Nathan, he was – back then he was focused on uh, short sales. And Sean Terry, he was uh, doing wholesale deals. And so, um, you know, I discovered that Sean had another podcast called um, Flip to Freedom. And so – I subscribe to that podcast, listen to it, devoured all 30 or 40 episodes, how many episodes were on there at that point. And um, I did some more research into doing wholesaling, and that took me to YouTube, Josh. And, you know, I've seen all types of people, you know, flipping houses and making 5000 10000 bucks. And I kind of figured to myself that, uh, hey, if they could do it, I could do it too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're a super smart, talented Good-looking guy with huge muscles. You could do it too. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you, man. You, you, <laughs> hey, 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 see, you're the first guy I know who can make a black guy blush. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Man. That's good, man. I like that. So, but... so, so, so you jump into real estate. Tell me about like your first, uh, you know, three months, six months. T tell me about that first start. And I think some people will want to know, right? They they ask me all the time, Josh. How did you get started? So, Daniel, what is that first? six months or less, what was that like for you? What kind of lessons did you take away from that? Well, uh, that's a very good question, Josh. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, the first three to six months were actually very, very uh, tumultuous. Um, I teamed up with another guy, and uh, his name was Josh as well, uh, Josh Zajac down in Tulsa. Um, and um, I teamed up with him because he knew construction and whatnot. And we had actually gotten three... Well, when we started off, we, we weren't sure if it really worked, this wholesaling thing. So we uh, created 50 signs, and we were marketing phantom properties. And for those of you guys who don't know what a phantom property is, it's where you are marketing a fake property that you don't even have. Um, yeah. yeah, whether it's ethical or not, um, you be the judge. We did it. So um, anyways, we advertised a 3 by one house for 19 5 k must sell fast, cash only, put a number on there place 50 signs out there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, by the end of uh, the weekend, we had gotten uh, about 200 calls uh, from people, yeah, <laughs> you know, blew our minds, and uh, yeah, man, and so uh, some of them were actually uh, really, really big ballers in the game uh, with uh, a lot of money, so um, anyways, uh, that gave us the confidence, Josh, to move forward and go out there and try to get uh, motivated sellers and get their houses under contract. Um, in the first three months, we had gotten three houses on the contract. Uh, two of those deals fell through. One, the one deal that we had that was still standing after those uh, first three months, it took us about six months for us to close that deal from start to finish because okay. uh, there was title issues and whatnot. But um, at the end of the day, we uh, made about uh, $6,500, I believe. Uh, that was our first wholesale check. Um, you know, it was a victory for us. And um, the one thing that I'll tell uh, your subscribers, Josh, is that when they're new and you're first starting out, uh, things aren't going to be easy. Things aren't going to be simple. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to persevere. You have to be able to take action. You have to be able to have a short memory span because yeah. you'll fail. But um, at the end of the day, each failure that you have brings you closer to a victory. And so right. – uh, uh, we got the deal closed out, Josh, and the second deal that I did, uh, we got that complete from uh, start to finish in two weeks. There you go. Made a quick so 5000 all that, all that learning from those first three deals, two fall apart, one takes six months. Then all the lessons that you learn, it's like, okay, now I can do this. Now I know what we did wrong on the first one. I know what we should have done differently and what worked, and now it's two weeks later. Boom, another check. Boom, another yes, sir. check. Awesome. So, so you start getting buyer leads right from the signs. Tell me about your seller marketing. Tell me about the marketing that you were doing back then. And then, you know, fast forward to today. What what kind of strategies are you de deploying now 
uh, to generate seller leads, motivated sellers, and, and uh, good properties to, to purchase. Okay, great question. Um, initially, when we first started, uh, we were doing uh, bandit signs to uh, get motivated sellers. Uh, those worked out pretty good. Um, and then I transitioned into using uh, postcards. And um, I was back then I was using Chris Chico system. Um, and we actually had uh, gotten some pretty nice deals from the postcard marketing. Um, and then, you know, I took it a uh, full circle back and I got back to internet marketing. Um, I was doing a lot of YouTube videos, targeting, targeting a lot of uh, good quality uh, keywords and uh, putting videos out there and that really, really helped tremendously. Um, nice. Nowadays, nowadays, Josh, um, since I'm running other businesses in conjunction with real estate, um, I'm trying to focus and uh, my focus right now in this season of my life is uh, fix and flips. And sure. uh, the, the biggest thing that we're doing right now to uh, generate leads uh, for the uh, fix and flip uh, business is just pretty much what I call surfing for dollars. Uh, meaning uh, I go on Zillow, go on Realtor.com, and I look for properties that fall in my criteria. And the ones that uh, fall in a certain criteria, hit a certain number range, uh, we'll use our Realtor and make bids on them. Yeah. Yeah, that's a classic strategy that we use in our 40K flips training is we teach people, listen, you got to really know your market. you got to use all the free tools that are out there from HUD Home Store to HomePath, HomeSteps, uh, Auction.com, Trulia.com, Zillow, uh, Realtor.com. You know, you can even opt in to a local Realtor's website that has an IDX connection, right? IDX, for those of you that don't know, mm -hmm. that don't know is stands for Internet Data Exchange. And all that is is a feed from the MLS into a realtor's website, so you can search the entire MLS for free, um, and you know you opt in and you get on somebody's list. You become uh, a buyer on somebody's buyer's list, but now you have free access to the MLS, and you could do 90% of the research for all of the quote unquote on market properties, right? So that's right. a classic strategy that we teach in the 40K Flips training is to do you know 90% of that legwork right from your home computer. You can sit around in your underwear, just like Daniel's doing now. And uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you have a shirt on. Uh, no, but you could <laughs> you could you could you could do ninety percent of the the research right from home, right? And then get out in the field with your realtor and go look at fifteen properties, make offers on all of them, and usually you're going to have one or two or three that shakes out into a deal for you. Um, so that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Now for those people who are in hotter markets where there's not a lot of on market inventory, maybe people who are in California or Seattle or Arizona. Or parts of Florida, you know. Then you go back to some of the strategies that Daniel already talked about, which is you know postcards and and uh, bandit signs and buying lists and internet marketing. Because there's a lot of people who are going through financial situations, distressed homeowners, probates, estate sales, etc. Where those people are eventually going to raise their hand and hire a realtor, and that property will go on the market. But if you're in a hot market, the goal is to get those people before. They go onto the market and, and get them as an off-market property. So, yeah, Daniel, very similar situation with us. We we started with short sales because Northeast Ohio was was not a super hot market, um, and we didn't have a lot of capital to buy a bunch of deals back, you know, eight ten years ago. So we focused on short sales and flipping those, buying them, negotiating them, and then flipping them quickly with none of our own cash or credit. And as as we've kind of grown up in the business and in this sort of season of life, I like the way you put that. Um, we we focus now on getting capital, raising capital, so we could do big deals, forty thousand, fifty thousand, eighty thousand, and up. And uh, you know that's where the that's where the big players really operate. You know, is on those big profit mm -hmm. deals, doing doing the big money stuff. Um, so, Daniel, tell me a little bit about that. You know, if if, if I'm a new student and I'm learning a little bit here from this interview, uh, of course, people are going to say, "How do I get the funding?" So, tell us a little bit about your your funding strategies. Where, where do you get the money from? And and, and how does that how does that work for you? Okay, good deal. Um, yeah, in, in my particular uh, case, Mark, um, because I've been in real estate uh, for a, a decent amount of time, and I, I try to make as many connections as possible. Um, I was actually my partner; he actually knew a lot of uh, different sources, uh, which led into private lending. And so, um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I got you. 
Okay. So, uh, yeah, so basically what happened was uh, we actually brought in a third guy uh, out of California who has uh, connections to uh, tons of uh, private lenders out there, uh, a lot of Asian buyers who are in California, and they want to buy in the Midwest just because of the, uh, the prices. And so uh, basically uh, we formed a partnership. And so um, in most of those deals, you know, it, it's not me making the, the 40K. You know, it's split up between partners. Um, sure. And would I love to get 40k, you know, smack in my pocket? I, I would love to, um, but at this stage, especially me being, um, I consider myself a rookie fix and flipper. Um, hence the reason why I joined your uh, sure. your uh, academy. I want to be all star and a pro like you. Um, when we, when I get more experience under my belt, then I'll tackle other markets and um, um, other deals. But uh, for now, you know, I'm fine with uh, teaming up with other people. We split it two-way or three-way, and uh, I do minimal work. Yeah. Yeah, that's that great, sense. man. Absolutely. You know, I, I heard a quote once uh, was from Henry Ford that said, I'd rather get, um, instead of uh, working on one project and getting one paycheck and having uh, just one way to make money, I'd rather have my hands in a thousand projects and get one percent of each project. I think the quote was yes. more something along the lines of, instead of getting a thousand percent of one thing, I'd rather get one percent of a thousand things. Um, and, and that's that's pretty close to the actual quote from Henry Ford. And I, I'm the same way. I don't I don't get a hundred percent of every deal I do. I don't own a hundred percent of every business that I run. I, I have partners, or I have general managers, or I have. Uh, you know, executive staff that runs a lot of my companies for me, uh, and I kind of sit uh, as a partner with them and strategize with them. And often, I come in with the money to get things up and running and funded, and the vision. And they're participating in the growth and the daily execution, and I give up a piece of everything to them uh, mm -hmm. so that they can run it. They're happy. They're uh, they're driving towards the income that they want. And, and I, I have a part of all these little things that are out there. Um, you know, so today we own, you know, uh, I don't even know how many businesses, well over 10 or 12, and we get a piece of each one. And I don't think any one business do I get 100% of the profit because I'd have to do 100% of the work. And exactly. I'm not interested in doing that. So I love your approach. Uh, hey, one guy's the money guy. You know, you're helping coordinate deals. Even though you live in Vegas, you're doing deals in Oklahoma. And, and you got another guy who's probably your boots on the ground, who's doing a lot of the legwork over there. Is that is that kind of how the structure lays out for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much that's it. You hit the nail on the head. Um, it's um, I uh, we have the guy in Calif uh, California. He um, is in charge of the money, uh, getting the deals funded. Uh, we have myself, and I'm in charge of the marketing and uh, getting properties acquired, uh, dealing with realtors, uh, kind of coordinating things. Um, and uh, starting next month, we'll be in Oklahoma about half of uh, the time. We'll be flying between here and Las Vegas and Oklahoma. Um, and then my guy Josh in Oklahoma, he's our uh, boots on the ground, like you said, and he deals with a lot of the uh, construction side and the, um, the the nails and hammers yeah. of the yeah. operation. <laughs> yeah, awesome, awesome. So um, kind of taking where you're, where you're at now and, and, and you know, incorporating the show, tell me what, what's your average day like, you know, dealing with the show and the recording of the show and dealing with the properties that you have in your other business ventures, uh, what is that? What is that? How does that? How does that flow out for you? And how do you kind of manage all those moving parts? Uh, pretty much, uh, what I try to do is, um, I believe that every person needs to schedule their day out with purpose. Um, I heard a, a live podcast that you did about a month ago where uh, you stated that um, on these particular days uh, you do this and then on these days like I believe it was Saturday Sunday you do absolutely nothing it's just your family day and on these uh, three days I believe it's your tasks that make money day it, am, am I hitting right. that right that's exactly right we call them free days focus days and buffer days I learned that from Dan Sullivan the strategic coach um, his program is up in Toronto. Uh, I know that there's a lot of other marketers, Joe Polish, Dean Jackson, uh, myself, and a lot of others who are huge proponents of, of uh, Dan Sullivan's program. I was involved in that program when I was a financial advisor when I was 24 years old. I had made my first six-figure income when I was 24. And you know, I wanted to see like how could I be more strategic about my day. 
And so uh, fast forward now almost uh, 15 years. I just turned 38 last week. Yikes. Um, 38 and 28. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, I'm uh, I'm actually excited about turning 40 and, and everything that the opportunity that's in front of me. Uh, but uh, but yeah, three days a week are my focus days, which for me is uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then my free days are Saturday and Sunday. And my buffer days are Tuesday and Friday. And so just to lay that out, uh, your your focus days are the days where you do nothing but revenue producing activities and focus on your most important projects. Uh, your buffer days are the days where you do other things in your business that are necessary but don't necessarily make money. Things like meetings, um, and for me, I do my coaching calls on Tuesdays. Um, you know those kind of things. And then my buffer days and my free days are days where I do absolutely nothing with work. I I often turn my cell phone off all day. I try to put it away even if it's on and um, try not to answer it. And I don't answer any emails. I don't really check out any stats or anything like that. So. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's how I laid mine out. So you, uh, you, you obviously learned something from that podcast, and you're implementing that for yourself now. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I sure did. Um, because uh, what was happening, uh, Josh, is um, uh, my one of my other businesses that I run is out here in Las Vegas. It's actually a legal document preparation service. Uh, we what we do is we prepare uh, divorces and other legal paperwork for uh, clients in Las Vegas and all across the country. Uh, we're running a pretty big operation out here. We're doing about uh, actually about 40k revenue a month, um, oh, and so um, I'm getting that all situated where you know it's being 100% ran by uh, a good team that I have in place. Uh, but uh, as of now, what I have uh, distinguished my days as is Tuesdays and Thursdays are my uh, diverse days and Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are my uh, real estate days. Um, okay. I kind of cheated on that by talking to you today. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's how divorces happen is cheating on your work day. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. That's all right. You talk real estate a little bit more often. Nobody's going to know. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Yeah, that's what it breaks down to, you know? So, I mean, I use some really simple tools to manage my day. One of them is just a to-do list, right? Okay. It's amazing simple. to me how people operate without a to-do list and then just knowing hey what is everything I need to get done not just today but ideas that I have for the next week or two weeks or three months or six months I put it all on one to-do list and then usually on Sunday nights I take a look at that and I, I lay out the rest of my week and I plug things in there you go that yeah, very very cool I plug things into my week so you know usually by Sunday night or Monday morning I know pretty much what I'm going to do all week long, and I, I don't wake up wondering like, what am I going to do today, or what am I going to do tomorrow? It's it's already laid out. Like I know what my schedule looks like until a week from today. I know everything I'll be doing. Wow, what's a priority to get done? I mean, we're recording this on a Tuesday afternoon, right? And literally for the next eight days, I know exactly where I'll be almost every hour of every day, um, and I've wow. scheduled the most important things to be on that schedule. And to get done. So when people say, "Hey, you run twelve businesses and you make millions and millions of dollars a year, how do you do it?" Well, it's it, it, there's nothing really scientific about it other than I know what's important. I write it down mm -hmm. and I schedule it in, and it gets That's done. Good. Um, That's good. I wish there was some crazy terminology. You know, these marketing guys, Daniel, isn't it funny? You listen to a podcast and some guys will have some crazy acronym for how do they get things done. And it ends up being like yeah. I write I write things down, <laughs> I identify what's important, and I do it. Right, it's those three things. Uh, when I was a financial advisor, they used to say that's post. the JC system. Yeah, that's the JC. Yeah, the JC system. I, it, it, when we was a financial planner, it was post, prioritize, and do. That's what that's what I was taught when I was 21. You post everything, which is your to do list. You prioritize it, and then you do it. And then I use the Dan Sullivan, which is called. Yeah. Um, the personal economic system is what he calls it to okay. basically lay out the days of the week where I'm going to get certain things done. So it blows me away when somebody has, uh, you know, a lot less to do than than I do, and they're not accomplishing as much. It's usually just because they haven't posted their priorities, they haven't prioritized them, and they're not actually executing them. They're just kind of floating through the day, yeah. and whatever kind of softball gets lobbed at them. They're hitting that softball, and they're constantly hitting softballs all day. And then at the end of the day, they're like, 
well, shit, I didn't, I didn't really hit any important softballs. I just hit a lot of small, hit unimportant softballs. I hit a lot of foul balls. I hit a lot of grounders, but I didn't hit any home runs. You know, that's how really big things get done is, is, is you have people lob you important softballs and you hit home runs all day because you know what's, what's important. So it sounds like you're, uh, you're diving into that whole, wholeheartedly, huh? Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and I mean that's totally incredible what uh, you just said, Josh. Uh, because um, I, I'm really big into scheduling my uh, days out as well, uh, but I don't schedule them out eight days in advance. Like uh, what you told me was totally sounds transformational to me because um, sure. I, I um, uh, get my day planned out the night before, and then I write out my tasks. But um, that's I think that's awesome that you're able to plan a week in advance and yeah. uh, wow, I'm going to actually try that. I'll give you a few other pointers, right? One of the things that's important okay. to me is to spend time with my wife, right? And with yeah. three little kids and lots of businesses that in the past used to be an afterthought. Well, not anymore. My wife and I, we go to the gym together every Tuesday and Thursday morning from 9 to 1030. We go on date night every Friday at 630. Um, and so so I know that I'm going to spend quality time with my wife those three times. Um, in addition, my wife has a, a free like mom's night, right? Where she, every Tuesday night she goes out with her girlfriend. Every Wednesday night I play golf with my buddies because mm -hmm. having my wife have free time to do whatever she likes and me playing and seeing my good friends, and a lot of them are investors of mine or they're business partners of mine, that's important to me. So all of that got scheduled, and it's amazing to me now I have – I have great relationships with my friends and my private lenders because I've made it a priority to see them every yeah. Wednesday. I have a great relationship with my wife, and certainly, just like any couple, you know, we have our ups and downs. And and uh, but I would say we have a very, very, very strong marriage because we we know when we're going to see each other, and we can look forward to spending time together. Um, and we have times when we just uh, you know just sit around the house and and talk about what what's the thing next thing we want to accomplish and where we want. Where do we want our life to go? Um, you know, usually the only night that's really not scheduled is honestly is Monday night. It is is totally okay. free. Some people might say, well, Josh, that's that sounds boring. It sounds too rigid. No, because you know what I've done? I've taken all the most important things in my life that I love to do and scheduled them. So I'm not only operating at a high level, but I'm operating doing the things I love. So I don't have a week that goes by or two weeks that goes by and think, you know, I wish I would have spent more time with my wife, or I wish I would see my buddies, or I wish I was good at golf. No, all the things that are important to me get scheduled and done. Um, and so it's 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 an interesting way. It's, it's something I've had to learn over time. And I used to think like I'm a, sort of a slave to my schedule. Well, no, it's it's mm -hmm. it's knowing what's important is step yeah. number one. It's posting and putting down your to-do list of what's most important, scheduling that in, and then life becomes more fun and you get more done. So Daniel, I would say, hey, look at your schedule and and uh, you know look at the next week or month uh, or six months. You you wouldn't believe, Daniel. We have things planned out right now on our schedules into 2015. We we, we wow. know things that are going on next year. Uh, for, for instance, I know I take off the week after Father's Day every year, right for vacation. Okay. And okay. that's the week of my daughter's birthday. It's Father's Day. It's my birthday, and I just take that week off every year. So I already know that that's planned, right? Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, just just little little tips there for you and anybody who would listen to this. It's, it's it's hugely important to be a high level performer and have balance. It's it's big. That's time. awesome, big and time. and yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, I just tell people that uh, you know they need to start living an effed up life. Uh, balance your life. Uh, have your faith be priority, have your family be priority, have your friends be priority, fitness be priority, and uh, get fun in there, you know, and uh, finances, obviously, <laughs> <Effed up> <laughs> you know, so be effed up, you know, awesome. <laughs> so it's trademarked, so don't try to use it, but, uh, uh, no, I, man, you know, you're going to be, you're gonna be you. with me in a couple of weeks at this uh, 40k flips uh, summit, man, you have to, you have to use that from stage. I will, I, I, I want to see, I want to see John's awesome. drop, like, oh my god, is he telling me to be effed up? Yeah. That is, Get that bastard off the stage. Oh, you copyrighted that too. That is killer. I love that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I didn't copyright that. <laughs> oh, you should though. Holy cow. That's powerful, man. That's very powerful. So, so Daniel, let's, let's kind of wrap up with this. I know we're having a good time. Um, tell people really quick, like when, when you're, even though you said you're kind of new to the buy, fix, and flip for big profits, 
Um, how are you selling your properties? What, what are you doing to unload them quickly? Uh, basically, uh, what we're doing is uh, on the first flip that we did, um, we actually uh, got listed by a realtor, uh, got listed on MLS, and it was at such a good uh, deal. Um, it was about 90, 95% of the, uh, the um, uh, going rate for that neighborhood, uh, and the house was pretty decked out, so it pretty much sold quickly. Uh, what we're going to do on the future houses, houses Josh, is – because we're selling to traditional uh, buyers and they're going to bring in a realtor, we ourselves might as well use a realtor on our side uh, since a realtor fee is going to be uh, paid out anyways. Um, so we're going to be using our realtor, but I'm also going to step up my game and do a lot of the things that I did back in the days when I was wholesaling, uh, such as uh, pop the videos out there on YouTube, uh, Craigslist, um, bandit signs. I love me some bandit signs when it comes yeah. to, to uh, selling properties. Love um, me some bandit signs. Heck yeah. And also, um, one awesome thing that I want to do is um, that open house uh, system that you have in your training program. Um, I believe it's the, uh, uh, is it called the property launch system? Property launch. It's funny, you know, I'm teaching that live class in eight minutes. As soon as we really? and I wrap up, I'm teaching that live class at 2 o'clock Eastern time today. Oh wow! Oh yeah, you need to get off the phone with me then. <laughs> yeah, it, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. In a minute, we'll, we'll get we're good. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll wrap up here, and then I'll literally jump off the line. I'll teach that class for ninety minutes, and you know, if you could jump on, great. If not, I'm going to record it. You can get it inside the membership site um, of Forty K Flips. But uh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, we have we. Have, I'll give you an idea, uh, Darren. We have uh, uh, Daniel. We have one of our agents, Darren, who's also an investor, a Forty K Flips investor. And in the last four weeks, he's held four property launches. He sold three out of the four houses before the property launch on Sunday. That's killer. Because the property went live on Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning, and the house was decked out, pictures. He has, you know, uses our full marketing campaign. And uh, people said, you know, I want to make an offer on this house. I'm going to buy it before mm -hmm. everybody else gets in there on Sunday. And mm -hmm. on three out of the four, he was able to lock up a buyer by Friday night. And matter of fact, two of those Friday nights, I went out with Darren for drinks afterwards uh, because we were talking on the phone and I was helping him consult through those. Um, not only because he's local, because he's one of my realtors, I, you know, and he's also in our coaching program. I work with them. And so, yeah, the property launch formula works like bandits, it's like, like crazy. And uh, I'll be teaching that in seven minutes, um, wow. which is pretty That's cool. Awesome. So you, you definitely have to deploy that for sure. Oh, definitely, definitely, and yeah. I mean, real quick. Um, um, I haven't done it yet, but you know, I'm a master. Let me not say I'm a master of marketing, but I know what uh, I'm doing when it comes to marketing. And when I read that and listened to your video training on that, I knew automatically that it worked. And that's something that I need to do. Not something that I might do, but it's something that yeah. I need to do. So. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So tell us about HGTV. How, how did you? We'll kind of wrap up with this, and I definitely want you to okay. tell everybody. You know they're going to want more information from you and how they can you know download your ebook and, and where to get some more information. But let's let's finish up with those two. So so tell us about HGTV. How did they find you? How did you get on such a cool show? Oh well, thank you. Um, uh, what happened was um, uh, producers they're always scouring YouTube for uh, the next uh, great talent. Um, and so what happened was there was a New York company uh, that was a production company. They found one uh, vi one video that my wife and I did, and so they sent it off to HGTV. HGTV liked it, and then they spent like the next two months trying to get a hold of me. I kept on ignoring them because like I thought they were trying to scam me out of money, you know, and say, "Oh, hey, you're great, you're gonna be on TV." And I was like, "Yeah, whatever." <laughs> And so uh, finally I talked to a lady from the production company, and uh, one thing led to another, Josh, and um, I talked to the president. Uh, they flew out to Vegas. We did a five-minute sizzle uh, video. Uh, they pitched that to HGTV. HGTV countered and wanted us to do a fix and flip show um, out in the uh, central region of the uh, U.S., um, and so since I was based out of Tulsa uh, originally and had experience in Tulsa, um, they wanted to do the pilot down there. Uh, we did the pilot down there in Tulsa last year, last fall. Um, it aired on uh, all throughout May. Uh, we had about uh, over 2 million um, looks, I believe. Um, and so they signed us up to do a 12-episode season. So yes. um, for the rest of this year, yeah, it's crazy. Twelve houses, twelve episodes, twelve hairs on my head. It's gonna be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you shaved those off a long time ago. I know, right? <laughs> now they're on your beard. I like it. I like it. Very cool. 
Very cool. So we're going to see you on HGTV. So you're in the process now of actually recording those, those like buying those houses, recording those episodes, yes. and they'll air live, what, like later this year or next year? Um, hopefully, Josh, at the end of the year um, or the springtime of 2015, uh, it'll air. And um, it's called Five Figure Flip. Um, people can go ahead and go to fivefigureflip.com. Uh, it takes you straight to our Facebook page where you can like it and uh, you'll get updates on uh, what we're doing. Uh, we already have two houses locked up. Uh, we're looking at getting two to three more in the next uh, uh, three to four weeks. Uh, we're operating pretty quickly. Um, and then, yeah, if uh, people want to get in contact with me, I live at www.houseflippingninja.com. That's houseflippingninja.com. They can subscribe. To my email list, get my free 223 page ebook. Josh said it was uh, terrible, you guys, but it's actually really, really good. So. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just I, it, I just, uh, you know, Daniel and I, like I said, are relatively, relatively new friends, and and uh, I just downloaded the ebook the other day. I couldn't believe it was 223 pages. I'm like, damn, this guy gave it away the kitchen sink, and it's free. Um, and so Daniel and I are, you know, we're talking. He's going to come up and be one of our speakers at our our live event coming up here in a few weeks. Um, I bribed him with uh, with uh, with Brazilian barbecue and and that cocktails works. and and all <laughs> kinds of yeah all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna have a good time there, and then we'll see. You know, Daniel and I are talking about maybe producing a a, a quick flip sort of wholesaling program product together. Uh, but yeah, guys, definitely check out houseflippingninja.com. You definitely want to follow Daniel on YouTube and podcast and, and download his ebook and get all the information you can. Check out fivefigureflip.com as well. We'll definitely like his Facebook page. So, Daniel, I got to run. I got to teach this class, man, in two minutes. And then yes, uh, you and I are going to be back together tomorrow, actually. We're going to do another live webinar just to some of my 40K Flip subscribers. So, man, I really appreciate your time. This was a lot of fun. Also, thank you for having me. All right, guys. Take care. Guys, listen, if you, if you got a lot out of our uh, interview today, make sure you give us a five-star rating in iTunes and uh, leave us a rating. Tell us uh, what kind of questions you have for Daniel. We'll answer those right on our iTunes page. Daniel, thanks a lot for being here. Guys, take care. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Josh. <laughs> <laughs>